All right, in this video, let's go ahead and learn how to deal with duplicate key errors or exceptions. So let's go ahead and select Omar again. So select start from and then person. So actually, let's let's go ahead and pick someone else. So let's go ahead and pick this person right here. So Russ. So 2017, that's the, that's the actual ID. So and then where? ID equals to 2017, right? So remember, the ID column, so this ID column right here, is the value that uniquely identifies Russ in this table. So this guy right here called Russ. So meaning that if you were to insert someone with the exact same ID, your query should never work and throw an exception or an error saying that the key is already in use. So let's go ahead and try. Let's go ahead and simply say insert and then into and then person right here. Let's go ahead and add the actual ID, first name, last name, gender, email, date of birth, and finally country of and then birth. And then don't press semicolon and press enter. So we're going to continue on a new line. And now we're going to say values. And then within parentheses, let's go ahead and try to add someone with the exact same ID as Russ. So 2017. And let's go ahead and pretty much just try and, and give it the same name. So Russ, and then they should be in quotes. And then last name, I'm not even sure if this is a real name. So, <laughs> and then mail, and then the actual email, just let me grab it. And then the actual date of birth. So remember date, and then first comes the actual year, or 1952, September, and then the 25th. And the country is Norway. Now, if I press semicolon, and I want you to have a guess whether this will work. So remember, I said that the actual ID is a unique identifier for this column. So we're trying to add a second person with the exact same information as Russ, including the actual ID. And in fact, you can see that the error says duplicate value violates unique constraint. And the constraint is the person primary key. And you can see in the actual detail, it says key ID 2017 already exists. So there are times where you don't want to blow with errors or exceptions, right? So basically you want to handle the case where you have conflicts. And this is when you use the on conflict keyword. So let's go ahead and pretty much just press up one time. And instead of running the same command again, remove the semicolon and then press enter. And now we can say on conflict. So this is the actual uh, keyword that allows us to handle on conflict scenarios. So on conflict, and then we have to pass the actual column that might be in conflict. And in our case will be the ID. And then we can say pretty much do and then nothing. So if I press semicolon, now if I run this, you can see that we have no errors. And right here, you see that no inserts were performed. So zero, zero. And this is how you handle duplicate key errors. Now, we catered for the actual ID, so ID right here, but we could also have a conflict for the actual email because our email has a unique constraint. So if I press backslash D and then um, and then person, you can see that right here we have a person email key and then the unique constraint, right? So if I go ahead and clear the screen and then instead of actually saying on conflict ID, I can pretty much say email, right? Do nothing, enter, and you can see that also works. But this will not work if you don't have a unique column. Right. So if I was to pretty much just pass first name here, so first and name, enter, you can see that there is no unique or exclusion constraint matching on the on conflict specification. So whenever you want to use the on conflict, make sure that your column is unique. 
i.e. have a constraint, either a primary key or a unique constraint. And you can also have a non-conflict on multiple columns if you wish. This is all for now. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop me a message. Otherwise, join me in the next video.